trainee clinical scientist at the Royal Surrey Cancer Hospital in Nuclear Medicine. I'm currently on the scientist training program and my specialism is imaging with ionizing radiation which is a branch within medical physics. So today I'm going to be briefly talking you through how the physicists get involved in the thyroid cancer patient pathway. So the thyroid is a small butterfly shaped gland somewhere in your, around in your neck that controls, uh, that produces hormones and helps uh, control your metabolism. Um, and the patients that we see have cancer of the thyroid. So before getting to our department, most patients will have a thyroidectomy, so they'll have their thyroid removed. But inevitably, there's always microscopic traces of thyroid left, which if we didn't treat, then they would then grow again uh, and lead to a recurrence of the cancer. So in order to destroy these little microscopic traces of thyroid, we have a treatment which we call radioiodine ablation. So just meaning we use radioactive iodine, specifically we use iodine 131 to destroy the rest of that, that, that thyroid tissue that we couldn't take out during surgery. Uh, it's a really targeted treatment because the thyroid is the only body, uh, the, the only organ in the body which takes up iodine, which means that when we give the, the, the patient the radioactive uh, tablet, then it's not going to go anywhere else in their body if we don't want it to, which is, which is really, really good. Um, and so I will stress this tablet I have here is not radioactive, um, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So it looks just like a paracetamol, um, and it comes in this big lead pot, obviously because it's very radioactive, so we use um, anywhere from 1.1 to 5.5 gigabecquerels of radioactivity. So it has to be in this quite large lead pot just to make sure that um, it's safe to be safe to be transported. Um, and so with that, I will head upstairs and I'll show you the room where we do the treatments. So these are one of the treatment rooms that we have for thyroid cancer patients. They're completely isolated from the uh, rest hospitals simply because we have to put some restrictions in place to avoid a radiation exposure to other staff members and other patients. So all of the walls in this room are lined with lead so that none of the um, gamma photons can escape the room. And actually we have the patient confined to this room for the duration of their treatment. So that means they could be in this room for anywhere from one to three nights, depending on how much uh, activity we give them initially. Um, and as shown downstairs, this is the pot that the thyroid capsule gets given him. And actually what this tube is for, it's for three reasons. So it's so that um, the patient doesn't have to directly touch the capsule themselves since it's so radioactive and there's a little bit in the top here where the capsule can come out and so they can just wrap their, uh, their mouth around the tube and take it back. It also means that they can't drop the capsule which is a, uh, a big consideration and also that it stays sterile as well so no one has to touch it before, while, they, while they're taking it. Um, and it turns out that uh, when iodine is excreted from the body, it can come out in all sorts of different fluids. It can come out in the sweat, um, the urine, and loads of other different bodily fluids. So we take precautions to try and avoid radioactive contamination in the room. So we do that by we wrap various things in cling film. So that's door handle, chair, um, armchairs, the TV remote we have, uh, and the phone the call button just so that when it comes to the patient leaving, rather than us having radioactive iodine all over those items, we just have it on the clinic and we wrapped it in. Um, so just so we can turn around the room quicker. Um, and we monitor the amount of radiation in the patient uh, using a detector, which I will explain now. So it's useful for us to be able to monitor the amount of um, how the levels of radiation in the person's body are dropping throughout their treatment. So we can do this with a radiation detector like this one. So this is a Radhound detector. It's a scintillation detector just with the, um, with the probe right here for detecting any radiation incident upon it. And it gives us, in, uh, gives us a reading in counts per second, so the number of counts it detects every second. And we can monitor the amount of radioactivity in them by placing our monitor in a reproducible position, and then immediately after their treatment, 
we can take a measurement of the number of trans per second that we receive while they stand. My uh, colleague here stands in a reproducible position on the floor. And then so that we know that the activity that we administer to the patient is then corresponds to the number of counts per second that we can measure on our detector. And so that means if we come back tomorrow and the number of counts that we're detecting has, fall, has uh, fallen by half, that means we can roughly approximate that the amount of activity in them must have fallen to half as well. And then so by plotting this data on a uh, graph, we can calculate the clearance of the radioactive iodine from the patient. And from that, we can estimate kinds of the radiation doses that people will receive after they leave the hospital and go back home. And from that, we uh, can offer restrictions. So we can say that for pregnant, pre pregnant women and, and children in particular, that they should keep uh, like an arm's distance away from them for um, the next week, for example. And then there's separate restrictions for members of the public and, and regular adults that would normally be a bit shorter. And so the physicist is involved um, in, that, in, that, in that whole pathway, and I hope that is interesting to see how a physicist is involved in the work um, in hospitals.